From the wilderness of Kodiak Island, Alaska, this is Murder and Mystery in the Last Frontier with your host, Robin Bearfield. In a land full of peril and vicious animals, humans are the most dangerous predators of all. Before Santa Fe, before Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, before Sandy Hook, and even before Columbine, there was Bethel Regional High School in Bethel, Alaska. On February 19, 1997, Evan Ramsey loaded a Mossberg 500 12-gauge shotgun, hid the gun in his pants, and rode the school bus to the Bethel Regional High School, where he attended classes. What happened next would tear apart the small town of Bethel, Alaska. And as with all the school shootings to follow, students and parents would be left asking, why? Welcome to Murder and Mystery in the Last Frontier. I'm your host, Robin Bearfield, and I'm broadcasting to you from the heart of the Kodiak National Wildlife Refuge on Kodiak Island in Alaska. Evan Ramsey had the worst of childhoods. When Evan was five years old, his father, Don, earned the nickname Rambo of Alaska when he stormed the Anchorage Times office. Don Ramsey was furious with the newspaper for refusing to publish his political attack letter. He entered the newspaper office armed with an AR-180-223 semi-automatic assault rifle and 180 rounds of ammo, plus a 44 caliber Magnum handgun with 30 rounds of ammunition. Ramsey also carried smoke grenades into the building. But at the last moment, he changed his mind and did not go through with the attack. He surrendered before he hurt anyone. The elder Ramsey spent 10 years in prison for his planned attack, and he left prison in February 1997, just two weeks before his son entered the Bethel Regional High School armed with a shotgun. Not long after Don's arrest, someone set the Ramsey's house on fire and the family had to find another place in Anchorage to live. Evan Ramsey was the middle of three boys, and their mother, who already had a drinking problem, descended into alcoholism and could not support her children. When Evan was seven years old, the Department of Youth and Family Services removed him and his two brothers from their mother's custody and placed them in foster care. Evan and his younger brother, William, were separated from their older brother, John. Between 1988 and 1991, Evan lived in 11 foster homes. According to Evan and William, they were abused by several of their foster parents. William later said that some of their foster brothers paid other kids to beat Evan while they watched. Evan suffered from depression and at age 10, he attempted suicide. When Evan was 10, he and William moved to Bethel with their guardian. In addition to his depression, Evan's grades were poor, and he struggled to control his explosive temper. Not long before the shootings, Sue Hare, the Lower Kuskokwim School District superintendent, became Evan's guardian. Evan seemed to do much better in his new home but he struggled to cope with the endless teasing at school. Kids referred to him as retard, spaz, or brain dead. Evan most hated it when his classmates called him Screech after a geeky character on the TV series Saved by the Bell. Evan did not know how to deal with the bullying and harassment, and he quietly drew up a hit list of kids he wanted to kill. Bethel is located in southwestern Alaska, and it's the largest town on the Kuskokwim River. 
The city sits 50 miles upriver from the mouth where the river flows into the Kuskokwim Bay. With a population of approximately 6,500 people, Bethel is the largest city in western Alaska. This area of the state has been home to the Yupik peoples for thousands of years. Bethel Regional High School serves grades 7 through 12, and in 1997, approximately 450 students attended the school. Evan Ramsey was not the most popular kid attending the Bethel Regional High School, but he was also not an outcast. Some of the kids made fun of him and called him names, but he had a few close friends, and they spent hours playing the computer game Doom. At the time, many concerned parents worried about the violence portrayed in Doom, where the characters stalk, shoot, and kill each other. Some adults believed Doom was not appropriate for teenagers. The Bethel school shooting would not be the only time Doom received some of the blame for teenage gun violence. Dylan Klebold and Eric Harris, the two suspects in the Columbine school shooting, enjoyed playing Doom, as did Michael Carneal, the shooter in West Paducah, Kentucky, and Andy Williams, the gunman at Santana High School in Santee, California. Whether Evan got the idea for shooting his fellow students from a video game or his father's actions a decade earlier remains unclear. Both the game and his father's violent activities probably factored into the creation of Evan's plan. Perhaps the terrible idea would have withered away as nothing more than a teenage fantasy, if not for the urging of his two friends, James Randall and Matthew Charles. The 12-gauge pump action shotgun Evan took from his foster mother's home resembled a gun often used by the characters in Doom. But Evan had no idea how to load or shoot the gun. James Randall showed Evan how to load and fire the weapon. And Matthew Charles encouraged Evan, telling him he would be famous for carrying through with something other kids only dreamed of doing. Evan's friends helped him compile a hit list of the teachers they hated and the students who teased them. Evan put a ninth grade boy and girl at the top of his list because he said they spit on him and called him stupid. When the time came for Evan to execute his plan, he did not see the kids he wanted to shoot. He decided instead to shoot those who were there. A few days before the attack, Ramsey and his friends told their classmates something big was about to happen. Instead of telling an adult that Evan Ramsey planned to bring a gun to school, some of the kids took cameras with them on the morning of the shooting spree. And several students gathered in the library on a mezzanine overlooking the lobby, where they had front row seats to the carnage. On Wednesday, February 19, 1997, Evan Ramsey stuffed the Mossberg 12-gauge shotgun down his pants leg to hide it. He rode the school bus to the high school and walked into the school's student commons area, where he pulled the gun from his pants and opened fire. He shot 15-year-old Josh Palacios in the abdomen and wounded two other students. Josh was a popular student and a star basketball player. Ray Nathanus, an art teacher, was sitting in the teacher's lounge when she heard a popping sound. She initially thought someone was setting off firecrackers. She walked down the hall toward the loud noises and encountered a stream of kids fleeing toward her screaming, He's got a gun! He's got a gun! Athanas hurried toward the commons and saw Josh Palacios sprawled on the floor, dying. She knelt beside Josh, and when she looked up, she saw Evan Ramsey pointing his shotgun directly at her. Athanas told Evan to put down the gun, but he refused. She saw rage on his young face and said he looked out of control. For some reason, Ramsey decided not to shoot Athanas. He left the area but returned a few minutes later. And this time, without hesitation, he shot and killed the principal, Ron Edwards, 50. Ron's wife, a substitute teacher, was at the school that day, 
and as Ron lay dying on the floor, she cradled her husband in her arms. Next, Ramsey raised the barrel of his gun to his chin, as if planning to commit suicide. He held the weapon there for several moments, but did not pull the trigger. Finally, he threw the gun down and yelled, I don't want to die. Ramsey quietly surrendered to the police, leaving two dead, two wounded, and a deep scar on the town on the tundra of southwestern Alaska. After his arrest, Ramsey claimed he did not understand that his actions would kill anyone. He thought he would just scare his bullies into leaving him alone. Prosecutors debated whether to try Ramsey as an adult or a juvenile, but finally decided to try him as an adult and hold his trial in Anchorage. On December 2, 1998, a jury found Ramsey guilty of two counts of first-degree murder, three counts of first-degree attempted murder, and 15 counts of third-degree assault. Judge Mark Isaac Wood sentenced Ramsey to 210 years in prison, but on appeal his sentence was reduced to two 99-year terms. Evan Ramsey will be eligible for parole in 2066 when he is 85 years old. The judge called art teacher Ray Nathanus a hero who tried to stop Evan three times during his rampage. Athena said she was mad at Evan for putting her through the ordeal. And she said, I'm mad at all those other boys and girls who didn't come forward and say anything. She said she saw 10 to 15 kids lined up in the library watching the show below them in the commons. Athena said she believes at least some of those kids knew Ramsey planned to bring a gun to school to shoot students and teachers. But none of the kids came forward to report the plan. Ramsey was initially incarcerated at Spring Creek Correctional Center in Seward, but he was transferred between facilities. He resided at the Goose Creek Correctional Center between Anchorage and Wasilla for a while, and then moved to the Wildwood Correctional Center in Kenai. Matthew Charles, the boy who convinced Ramsey he would live in infamy if he opened fire at the school, pleaded guilty to criminally negligent homicide. James Randall, who showed Evan how to load and fire the shotgun, was convicted of second-degree murder. Since the court tried both boys as juveniles, they could only be held until their 19th birthdays. Ramsey first explained to the police that he didn't think his actions would kill anyone. Did he think he was playing a video game, and once the game was over, the dead and dying would get up and walk away? Ramsey also said, my main objective of going into the high school was to check out, to commit suicide. These two statements contradict each other, and he couldn't very well have it both ways. If he knew he could kill himself with his gun, he also knew he could kill others. Prosecutor Renee Erb said the blame for the murders at the Bethel Regional High School lies squarely on Evan Ramsey's shoulders. She said, Ramsey is a bad person. According to Erb, there are some people in this world that are no good. Nobody really knows where they come from or why, but they've always been with us and it may be that they always are. Herb says she believes Evan killed those at the school because he desired fame, and she points out that he planned the crime ahead of time. Psychiatrist John Smith, who examined Evan a few months after his rampage, was not as harsh in his assessment of Ramsey. He noted Evan's history of depression, including his suicide attempt when he was only 10. By the time of the murders, Evan was using marijuana, getting poor grades, and struggling to control his explosive temper. Smith also points out that Evan did not plan his violence alone, but had the help and encouragement of his two friends. The night before the attack, Evan stayed awake all night, 
and didn't dare back down from his plan in fear of disappointing his friends. Dr. Smith said, The tragedy of everyone in Bethel, particularly the young man and the principal who were killed and their families, is that Evan was not recognized as needing as much help as he did. Ramsey later said he felt good in the hours after the killings, and he felt he had solved his problems. He said, Through my crime, I released hate and pain. He said, There were a couple of people I wanted to kill. There were two people I hated. Hate in the way Hitler hated the Jews. When Ramsey arrived at the school and did not see his intended targets, he shot those who were available. Ramsey said he didn't think about what would happen to him after his rampage. He said all he cared about was what is it going to take to get rid of this problem now. Not long after his sentencing hearing, Ramsey realized his actions would not bring him lasting fame. He said, I'm dead to the world. In a few months, nobody will remember me. There will be other people that will commit other offenses and I'll be considered yesterday's news. Ramsey said he didn't know why he let the teasing bother him so much. He said living in prison is much worse than living with his rage. In a 2001 interview, four years after the shooting, Evan Ramsey understood the hopelessness of his future. He told the reporter that he knows he will never leave prison, he blamed the school bullies, his parents, the foster care system, and the teachers who would not listen to him for making him believe the only way to solve his problems was to shoot people. When asked if he had a message for troubled teenagers contemplating a similar desperate act, he said, I would tell them the situation they're in now is not half as bad as the situation they're going to be in if they do something similar to what I did. It will only get worse. In 2007, 10 years after Evan Ramsey walked into the Bethel Regional High School with a gun and began shooting, reporter Anderson Cooper with CNN interviewed Ramsey in prison. Cooper asked Ramsey how long he spent plotting the attack. Ramsey said he planned what he would do for two weeks. Cooper asked why he took the gun to school, and Ramsey said he felt he had to do something drastic to stop the other kids from picking on him. According to him, other kids had beaten him up, spit on him, thrown things at him, and called him names. Ramsey said he had a list of people he wanted to shoot, but he claims he did not understand how the world worked. He thought life was like a video game and believed if he shot people, they would fall, but later they would be able to get up and leave. Evan said he didn't understand that a person would bleed to death and die if he shot them. In the video game Doom, he said, you have to shoot something eight or nine times before it dies. And he thought the same concept applied in real life. Anderson Cooper said he thought most people would have a hard time believing Ramsey did not understand dead is dead. Anderson Cooper asked Evan Ramsey what it felt like to pull the trigger, and Ramsey said he felt relieved. He believed he was scaring people and they would stop picking on him. Ramsey said he wished an adult would have sat down with him and explained the name-calling and other abuse would pass. His 16-year-old brain did not know how to deal with this situation, and he badly needed guidance. There is no indication Ramsey ever asked an adult for help. And Evan Ramsey had passed through so many foster homes, none of the adults in his life knew him well enough to understand his psychological struggles. A 2017 news report covered the 20th anniversary of the Bethel School shooting. Reporter Rhonda McBride talked to a 36-year-old Evan Ramsey at the Goose Creek Correctional Center, a 90-minute drive from Anchorage. McBride noted the gray streaks now running through Ramsey's black hair. When McBride asked Ramsey his thoughts on the shooting, he said a curious thing. There's a part of me that will always be sad for what I did, 
But the small amount of sorrow that I have, others feel more. Ramsey said he wished when he was 16 he had known that his high school years would pass quickly and the frustrations and bullying would end. Claudia Palacios, the mother of Josh Palacios, the popular teenager Ramsey killed, still suffers the sharp pain of losing her son. After the school shooting, Claudia moved away from Bethel, and although she eventually returned, she cannot bring herself to go to the high school to see the memorial for Josh and Principal Ron Edwards. Claudia has forgiven Evan Ramsey, but she will never forget what he did. Mrs. Palacios has fostered many children over the years, and she wishes she could have fostered Evan Ramsey. She said if she had fostered him, maybe he wouldn't have brought a gun to school. Evan had severe anger issues and did not know how to deal with bullies. Despite his inability to stand up to bullies in high school, Ramsey quickly learned how to survive in prison. When an inmate accused Ramsey of cheating at a card game, Evan attacked him with a sock filled with batteries. He said other inmates told him he would have to get into a fight to prove he was not a cheater and to make sure other inmates left him alone. If only someone had helped Evan learn how to stand up to or ignore bullies in high school, perhaps he would not have murdered Josh Palacios and Ron Edwards. If the court had tried Evan Ramsey as a juvenile, would he have become a repeat offender when he returned to society? Some of the statements he has made to reporters over the years make me wonder. Ramsey regrets his actions on February 19, 1997, but he expresses little remorse for his victims. He mainly feels sorry for himself because his actions landed him in prison for the rest of his life. His lack of empathy for other humans and his explosive temper make him a potentially dangerous individual. Was Evan Ramsey confused the day he opened fire on his classmates and teachers? I've read a few articles that suggest Evan Ramsey was mentally slow or developmentally challenged. But when reporters quote him, he sounds articulate and has an extensive vocabulary. He made poor grades in school, but grades do not always reflect intelligence. I think Evan Ramsey knew what he was doing when he walked into his high school with a loaded shotgun. He knew those he shot would not get up and walk away when the game was over. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you to my patrons for your support. Check out the show notes for more information on how you can support this podcast and unlock extra episodes by joining the Last Frontier Club. You can also search for this podcast on Patreon to learn more about the Last Frontier Club. I'll see you soon for the next episode of Murder and Mystery in the Last Frontier. Thank you.